Gen 3OU is a beloved metagame. While the absence of physical special split may seem strange and unintuitive at first, it makes the format stand out. Certain moves are special or physical in Gen 3 that aren't in future generations, giving many Pokemon unique options. Pursuit is a special move, for example, meaning Houndoom can act as a Pursuit Trapper and Ghost Counter. Hidden Power can be physical, meaning Pokemon like Salamence and Gyarados have access to a solid flying stab option, which is something they don't have in future generations. The absence of Stealth Rock in Gen 3 is also one of my personal favorite things about it. Without Stealth Rock, Pokemon like Moltres and Charizard are actually very effective offensive threats, while in future generations Stealth Rock significantly restricts their viability. The overall lower power level of moves in Pokemon in Gen 3 is also just conducive to a very balanced environment. Hoenn Gaiden is a mod for Gen 3 OU that aims to breathe some new life into this classic format, introducing Pokemon from future generations into Gen 3 and redesigning them so that they can function within Gen 3's lower power level and unique mechanics. Underpowered Pokemon are also reworked to make more sense in the Gen 3 environment. For example, Crawdaunt was a Pokemon that made no sense in Gen 3, with a high attack stat, but two stab types that could only be special and a very limited physical move pool. In Hoenn Gaiden, Crawdaunt is redesigned to be a special attacking wall breaker. One of the most significant buffs in Hoenn Gaiden is to Sunflora, who now has much better stats and access to a new ability, Desolate Land. Sunflora will create the harsh sunlight weather effect when it switches in, which takes priority over all other weather effects and cannot be replaced. The harsh sunlight will end when Sunflora switches out. This is an ability that exists to enable anti-weather teams, since it's a form of weather removal. In Gen 3 OU, Tyranitar is the most common Pokemon, and Permanent Sand is up in most battles. Sand will cancel out leftovers healing on many Pokemon that would otherwise be defensive monsters like Suicune, Snorlax, and Celebi. Some teams in Gen 3 aim to eliminate Tyranitar and clear the sandstorm with Rain Dance or Sunny Day to support teammates that dislike permanent sand. Sunflora was designed as a new tool for the weather clearing team style and a rival to the common Tyranitar and Obama Snow. DK Koba has sent me a Hoenn Gaiden team featuring Sunflora for this episode of Team Doctor. Let's take a look at their team and see if we can improve or change anything to get the most out of Sunflora. Most of my Team Doctor videos so far have been for Gen 9 OU, but you can send me teams for any format you like, including other metagames or even mods like this one. Take a look at my Patreon link in the description for more information. 80% of you watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy my videos, I'd appreciate it if you would take a moment to like the video and subscribe. Thank you. So here's the original submission from DK Cobra, folks. A very interesting squad we've got going on here. We've got the archetypical Sunflora. Me personally, I've always built Sunflora alongside Dugtrio because Dugtrio can eliminate Tyranitar with trapping. But this is a different take on the on the concept with a Magneton instead, aiming to weather clear and also eliminate Skarmory and Magnazone, who are the two big physical walls in the format. And then we have a bulk up Scrafty, which is a new Pokemon. This is an interesting Pokemon because in Gen 3 OU, because of the physical special split, this is actually great defensive typing. No special attacks can hit this Pokemon super effectively. Only physical attacks can hit it. It can be hit by fighting and flying, but no physical attacks can hit it. It's interesting. It's a special wall with this type combination. It's got dark resistance and rock resistance, meaning it can actually function against Tyranitar quite effectively. Interesting new Pokemon, great defensive stats, nice type combination, and of course Shed Skin is very strong. 33% chance to cure status, so alongside rest, you have just a chance to wake up instantly. You have a chance to shrug off uh, things like Will-O-Wisp and Toxic. A bit like a Snorlax, this Scrafty, but with a bit more... It's good in some areas, bad in others. Normal is a better overall typing. Because you're flying weak, when you bulk up, you're still vulnerable against stuff like Salamence and Ledian, who is a physical flying type introduced recently. Ledian has pure power in this. It's one of the strongest physical threats. Snorlax... After a couple curses, can shrug off a leading Aero Blast, but Bugs Bunny here cannot. So, an interesting new addition to the game. I think it's very strong in my testing. And does benefit from Weather Clear. Doesn't like Sand or Hail. Doesn't like the chip. Loves to heal with lefties. Enhance its bulk. So, a good teammate for Sunflora and for, for Magneton. Because we eliminate Skarmory, who could otherwise wall you and roar you out. We have the Father and Son combo. The Magnazone and the Magneton. Magnazone in... Hoenn Gaiden is not a Magnet Ball Trapper, it has Levitate instead, 
which is enormous for it. Ground immunity, meaning can't be trapped by Dugtrio, unaffected by spikes, and of course, most notably of all, immune to ground type. Times fall weak to ground type otherwise, but with this immunity, you have a fantastic physical wall on your hands here with the Magnazone. What's nice about Magnazone, it complements Scrafty quite well with a times fall resistance to flying. And Salamence is here. Uh, Salamence does benefit from Magneton. We have Dragon Dance Toxic as a strange set, but, but you know, I'm sure it can't be too bad. And Talonflame is a is a Pokemon that's really excellent in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden. It has Rapid Spin. I guess because in future gens it has Defog, but Defog doesn't exist yet, so they've given it Rapid Spin. And it has Flame Body. This is a great switch in against Metagross. It takes a mash because of the fire resistance it functions as a more defensive, sort of fast defensive utility Pokemon. Bit different to how it's used in later gens. In the Gen 3 environment, Fire Flying is actually a good defensive typing because Metagross is one of the biggest physical threats. So Steel Resistance is nice. Spike Immunity is nice. Fire Flying type can really round out a team defensively. And this has access to Wisp Spin and Healing. It's one of the best Rapid Spinners in the game. So I'll show you my first variant of the squad. I've made quite a lot of alterations here. So I've changed a lot of the EV spreads. Timid Nature, I think, is the most efficient because your base speed is so huge. You want to get the plus nature on that and go just above Gengar's 350 speed and then dump the rest into bulk. I think defense you want. Come in against those Metagross hits a bit nicer and other miscellaneous physical hits like fighting type hits that you resist. Let's you function a bit better. This is a nice speed benchmark and bulk benchmark. The set previously had special attack EVs. I think you don't want that. There's no... You got to use defensive investment on this for sure and i've put a celebi on the team i've replaced the magnazone this didn't turn out to be a good idea by the way but i thought you know let's take this in a different direction with the defensive core let's run a celebi this will help us against water types which we were previously a bit bad against benefit from magneton because we take out skarmory celebi hates skarmory skarmory can kind of just sit against this set and spam spikes and you can't do much against it with Magneton, Celebi shines. Giga Drain is also buffed in Gen 3 Hoenn Gaiden to be more like the modern Giga Drain with 16 PP and higher power. I'm running a Flygon as a, you know, Mag Synergy plus Tyranitar check. A lot of Tyranitars run Brick Break now to hit Magnazone. Relying on Scrafty not only as like a special wall, sort of a ghost switch in and a win condition might overload Scrafty too much. So I figured we want another Tyranitar check on the squad. So I've gone with a Flygon plus it's another win condition. It kind of replaces the Salamence from before. Similar idea, Dragon Dance Flygon is new in Hoenn Garden. This Flowing Gun didn't used to get this, but in Hoenn Garden, Flygon is one of the best physical threats actually because of Dragon Dance and its fantastic defensive profile. Ground Dragon plus Levitate. For the Scrafty EV spread, I just went full bulk, full special defense. The previous set had attack. I think you want to just maximize this thing's defensive value by giving it full special defense. Like I said, the typing is just so good for a Specially defensive Pokemon and it's spe it's base special defense is really good. So just go all in on the special defense for um This is actually wrong. I put synthesis here. I may have forgotten to change the Sunflora, but let me let me let me tell you DK Kerba I think that this is not the way to go for Sunflora. I think you also want to invest in bulk on this I think that's just a better way to go with this Pokemon. It is a Pokemon that you use for weather clearing, not for its offense. You, with the special attack of you're not getting much out of it because it's so slow. Mostly wants to come in, reset weather, maybe leech seed. And I think the best, one of the best moves on it is synthesis because desolate land creates sun that can't be blocked. Synthesis will always heal you for 75%. That's one of the best things about Sunflora actually is its ability to have this and have it not be able to be counted. You can't remove the sun. So that's one of the greatest things about Sunflora in Hoenn Garden. We're keeping the Magneton. Magneton does have some competition with Golem Alola. And you'll notice in the other variants, I go back and forth between Golem Alola, who has Magnet Pull, and Magneton. Wondering which one's better here. All right, here we are with the first replay. This is against Space the Invader. I think a newer player in the Hoenn Garden community. I was just testing the squad out with the first, the first alterations. We'll see how it goes. We've got a Tyranitar. Entering the, the fray. And I went to Scrafty against the Talonflame because I have Shed Skin so I can shrug off Will-O-Wisp. I can take a Flamethrower or whatever. And Scrafty, this is a bit comical. I just sort of, we got it on fast mode. Yes, we do. Take a look at this. I sort of just spam bulk up and add click buttons and I defeat this this player's entire team with the Scrafty. This is my first time using Scrafty and I was, I was very impressed with how immediately insane this Pokemon was. Look at this. I am... 
simply killing everything. Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout is happening right now. This is Bugs Bunny taking the wrong turn at Albuquerque, except not really because he's very effectively winning a Pokemon battle. So here's Parasect. I can simply wake up with Shed Skin and defeat Parasect. Fighting plus Ghost is perfect coverage. We have ways to defeat everything. And there you go. Look at Scrafty Solid. This is not the most solid team, I'll admit. Some, it's Space the Invader's first team. I respect some of the ideas here. Snatch Talonflame was quite creative. I like that. A bit of anti-stall technology. You could steal some subs or calm minds or rests from, from an enemy. Vespa Quinn is a new Pokemon. And uh, we got the Bishop, the Parasite. I feel like Bishop is not very good, unfortunately. And so here we are with a second replay with the same version of the team against Eevee Girl, a more experienced player. We lead off with a Talonflame versus Gengar situation. I go to the Celebi. And in comes Plusle. And Plusle is a big problem. Plusle ended up being horrible because look at this. Plusle threatens Celebi and Sunflora. Flygon can wall it, but Flygon is not very bulky. It's getting chipped down and Talonflame is threatened by it. It's immune to Will-O-Wisp and Flamethrower. So you're going to see Plusle be an enormous issue over the course of this battle. This is, this is terrible, really. Gengar blows up against the Scrafty, which was, I think, a good play to chip down my special wall as much as possible. I get the, the fly gun in. I was worried about HP ice here, but I'm, I've got a Yachi Berry on, so if your HP ice, you lose Plusle, I take the hit and I Earthquake you. And Cloyster is another issue for the team. Cloyster is one of the best Pokemon in Hoenn Guide, and it's straight water type. It's straight water type now, and it has Overcoat, meaning it's immune to sand and hail chip, and it has, you know, the same excellent move pool with Spike, Surf, Rapid Spin, Explosion, Toxic, all that. I can, of course, get Celebi in, but the spikes are going to be the big issue. It's hard to spin in the face of a Cloyster with Talonflame. That's one of the issues with it, is that it doesn't match up very well against Cloyster. I go to Scrafty expecting a Psychic or a Switch Out, and so I get another Chip Heal on the Bugs Bunny. And now I'm able to rest up. I think I get the Shed Skin effect here. I do. So that's... Look at Scrafty going insane. And it's a Hitmonlee. This is another issue for the team. Hitmonlee, a common Pokemon in Hoenn Guide, and has Magic Guard and very high attack. Look at how threatened we are by Hitmonlee. Talonflame is kind of the best switch in against fighting type attacks with the flame body chance and the resistance, but Hitmonlee gets Rock Slide. Hitmonlee gets Shadow Ball to hit Celebi. Everything else is, is weak or neutral to fighting. So Hitmonlee, enormous threat that I really struggle against. This this team from EV Girl has demonstrated many issues with my, my team here. We're weak against Cloyster, Plusle, and Hitmonlee. I have to make dangerous plays like going Celebi on a rock slide right there for little progress. And I kind of just slowly lose. I can't break through this this combination of Pokemon. It's too difficult. The Sunflora comes in, but for what? There's no way to, to get through the Plusle. The Hitmonlee is too threatening. This has poked holes in my team big time. So I made some alterations quickly before my next game with EV Girl. I added Weezing Galar to the team, who I thought would round out the team defensively a bit. Weezing Galar is now Poison Water type. Listen, folks, a lot of you take issue with the Hoenn Guide and lore. How could Weezing Galar be a water type? Well, it's got steam coming out of its head, so it's a water type. Can you explain why it's a fairy type in the actual game? Probably not. Why would it be fairy type, folks? What about this is a fairy type? Strange Steam is a fairy type attack? Does that make any sense? That's steam. That's water. I think we've just checkmated you, Hoenn Guide and Doubters. I think you've been checkmated. I don't think you can argue against what I'm saying. This is a water type. This is a poison water type, and it makes perfect sense. It's got Will-O-Wisp, Surf, Pain Split, and Aromatherapy. You can go in, a, in many different directions with Weezing Galar. You can run it as more offensive. It has stuff like Fire Blast, Thunder, Explosion. I think a more bulky direction made sense at the time. Pain Split to heal back up sometimes. Aroma to support to support my allies a little bit. So let's see how this squad went in, in the next battle. Let's take a look. And in comes a Magmortar, which is another Pokemon that is going to destroy me. Take a look at me. Magmortar is a mixed attacker. It has Crush Trop and Fire electric, ice, grass. It has like every coverage option. So it, it really pokes holes in something like this. It's got electric move to hit Weezing, fire move to hit Celebi, fighting move to hit Scrafty, fire move to hit Groudon, also known as Sunflora. And by the way, I replaced Magneton with a Golem. Just wanted to try out the different, the different fella. Plus Golem can get spin and Magnapul at the same time, meaning we didn't have to run Talonflame anymore. I do go for the Earthquake because if Magmortar has ice move, I have my Yachi Berry, so we can at least force it out turn one. 
curb the threat a little bit. We go Celebi. We reveal Weezing Galar. I go Flygon. I think I clicked Earthquake again. No, I Dragon Danced because I'm intelligent. We call out the switch to Zap. I eat my Yachi Berry. Insane gaming by Jim. Really epic stuff. We've taken out Zapdos. In comes Cloyster again. Cloyster causing me problems. And it's another Sunflora team. Imagine that. Sunflora. And Sunflora itself is a bit of a threat here. I can't really come in against Weather Ball very nicely. I just stay and I Psychic it down, hoping to not take a huge amount from Weather Ball. I didn't take a massive amount, only 58%. That's that's manageable. I get Golem Alola in. I'm now threatening a big Fire Blast. Sorry about the sprite not showing up. Of course, Magmortar pivots in on this Fire Blast and I have to go for an explosion here to trade with this because it's too threatening. I have to get it out of there. In comes Ledian. And this, this is another example of a flaw in the team. Since I cut Magnazone, I don't have a flying resistance, and I, I, I've sort of realized that flying resistance is a very important box to check in Hoenn Gaiden. Ledian is a problem, Salamence is a problem. I, of course, am a Lucker, and I dodged Aeroblast. That's a 5% chance. And Flygon outruns Ledian, so there you go. But in comes Cloyster, here to make some, some spikes and ruin my day. I can recover up, but to what end? Ledian is, is posing a huge threat against me. There's no switch in, there's no answer, there's nothing. All I can do is, is hope and pray. And this is the issue with Scrafty is the fact that it is... Unlike Snorlax, Scrafty is flying weak. So with Scrafty, you really need a flying resist on the squad. You really do. It's important. By the way, that's, that was that was garbage. I missed Will-O-Wisp on Jirachi. Eevee Girl is a certified locker. But that's, you know, that it, I think that there were other issues in this battle of larger concern. I will admit. But it would have been, been nice to hit that Will-O-Wisp, I will say. And we got burned by Fire Punch. We at least instantly healed the burn. This is okay because uh, Scrafty is shrugging off these hits very effectively, but then in comes Ledian very soon, and then we're we're in a world of hurt. Despite plus two defense, we cannot we cannot live that hit. Not at all. That's going to defeat us. We can get Weezing in for a fleeting moment, get a free will wisp but then of course it misses again. It's not it's not looking good for Jim right here. I went for a Surf that time. I thought I'd switch out. I thought something. I didn't want to click will wisp in the face of a sub, and then I just die to, to Psychic that time. There's no hope for me in this one. So I modified the team once again. This time, hold an a, entire overhaul of the squad. We've got a Claydol this time. I think Claydol is actually good in the Hoenn Gaiden meta because Tyranitar does not commonly run HP Bug anymore. HP Bug is not as worthwhile. It needs to run Brick Break more commonly to hit Magnazone. So Claydol can actually function as a wall against Tyranitar and a spinner. Plus I have put Rest on it for a bit of synergy alongside Weezing Galar's Aromatherapy. I added a Snorlax to the team. My thinking is, the Scrafty is like a bulk up sweeper that can match up against ghosts. Snorlax can match up against stuff like Jirachi and fire types and all these other guys. That, and uh, it can curse up and defeat like Ledian if it's cursed up enough with this great neutral typing. So it's kind of like two Pokemon that have a similar role, but they fill each other's gaps. That was my idea. And then I returned to Magneton for the flying resistance to try and cover everything. But then, of course, I don't know if this was actually effective. This is not really great for me in this battle. Here's Deoxys. I lead with the with the Groudon, also known as Sunflora. We take out Deoxys. And this is a nice situation. I've taken out Deoxys. Only one spike and... Only one spike and I've got a Clay Doll. This was an unfortunate interaction around here. I go to Weezing Galar thinking I will destroy this Metagross. But unfortunately, it is a... Mixed Metagross with Psychic, I've been blown out. That's a big deficit for me. Now, Metagross is a huge threat. At least Claydol can outrun it and click Earthquake, which I do click, but I fall right into the trap of a levitating Raikou. And Raichu, sorry, Raichu Alola is an interesting Pokemon. It's 350 speed, it has Levitate, and it has Substitute Focus Punch, and it has Calm Mind. So you have to do a bit of scouting against Raichu Alola. You can't just assume it's set. It can run multiple sets. So I wasn't sure what the set was. I go for their spin. It is a subset. Now I am worried about Focus Punch, but it's Calm Mind. I go to Scrafty and I can Shadow Ball to, to break a sub. Thunderbolt's gonna do pretty considerable damage though, but that's okay. We can break the sub. And then I unfortunately have to sacrifice Bugs Bunny for the greater good. It's an unfortunate situation I found myself in. And I can get Snorlax in. We can use Return to chip that down, but now Raichu Alola has taken out my Scrafty and chipped down my Snorlax significantly. So I'm not in a great position in this battle. My two biggest win conditions have been have been rendered ineffective. I go to Groudon, also known as Sunflora, and his Synthesis paying dividends. We heal all the way back up to full. 
I get a Leech Seed. We're clawing back in. Sunflora proving excellent. We got the Golem Alola coming in against the Jirachi. It's trapping it with Magnet Pool. I switch out, of course, to, to scout the move. It was Wish. Claydol defensively proving pretty nice here. Good against Jirachi and Metagross with Earthquake being threatened. I go back to Sunflora. As long as the Metagross doesn't get attack roses, the Sunflora can actually handle it reasonably well. We got enough bulk to not get too hit by Meteor Mash at least. And I go for Solar Beam that time. I actually thought that Suicune would come in or something. I don't know what I thought. I just wanted to cover random stuff and I hit a random Dug Trio in the back. Didn't know that that would happen. Yeah, I thought Suicune would come in on Weather Ball. That's what I thought. But it, it turned out to be Dug Trio. And there you go. Dog Trio getting taken out. Jimothy clawing back for dear life. For dear life. Clawing back into the battle. I have to sacrifice Snorlax. It has to be done. I go to Claydol. I'm threatening an Earthquake. Eevee Girl does not want to take the Earthquake. This was kind of a long end game here. I think that this Suicune was Mono Surf. And so Sunflora completely walls it. Because Harsh Sunlight also blocks water moves from happening. That's another thing I forgot to mention actually. Yeah. So we leech sheet up and we're trapping this Jirachi. We take it out with a Expert Belt Fire Blast. And we sort of dance around. The only hope that Eevee Girl has is to pressure storm me with, with uh, Suicune. Make me lose all my Earthquakes. And I do get low on Earthquakes. But I eventually get Golem Alola in and click T-Bolt, I believe, to finish the game off. I won't... Uh, there it is, yeah. Because T-Bolt hits both Suicune and Metagross enough to, to threaten them both. So I just go with that to end the game. And that's it. This was a, a good showing, but I think that the team, looking back at it, I was like, you know what, we still struggle against the flying types. I don't think that Magneton is good enough against the flying types. So I went with one final iteration, which brings back the Magnezone from the, from the original, which I guess I will call dad once again. There it is. So this team, I feel like should be pretty well-rounded after all this testing, after all this stuff. We've got the Magnet Puller plus Rapid Spinner in one. No more Claydol, no more Talonflame. We need to have a better defensive backbone. I think I was so caught up in this idea of having a solid rock resist for Tyranitar, but I think that we can cover Tyranitar well enough with this these fellas. Turn one, we will stop Sand immediately on turn one if it's a Tar lead. And with the combination of Magnazone, who walls Tar that doesn't have Brick Break, even if they have Brick Break, we have Weezing Galar for Fighting Resist. If they have other stuff, we bulk up, and then we, after one bulk up, Scrafty d handles them. And it also handles them pretty well anyway. You can probably take a Brick Break from them and just kill them back. Golem Alola, excellent Magnet Puller, can hit Magnazone and Skarmory, can spin and explode. And we still have the Snorlax, who was good. General Wall against stuff. So against the, all the stuff that was beating us this whole time, I think we have enough tools... These mixed attackers might still be a problem, like Magmortar and stuff like that. But I think that there's maneuverability around them. Snorlax can enter against a special attack, take a cross drop and just take him out. Against Magmortar, for example. Against like Delibird, same thing. There's, there's no perfect mixed answer that you can fit on this team. I, I think that you need to just... The most important thing is the flying resistance plus general physical walling ability of Magnazone alongside... Weez and Galar, that's a good core. You're pretty solid against Metagross as well with Magnazone. They can't Earthquake you, you resist Mash. And Weez and Galar is prone to getting psychic by a mixed Metagross. They can also HP Fire, but I think you're bulky enough. HP Fire is low power. You'll be alright versus that, and then Gala Malola can pivot in on fire. I think this team has the general tools to handle most things. I'm sure there'll be bad matchups that I that we will that will arise in testing and in more experience, but I think I'm happy with this version of the squad. For the Magneton, sorry, Magnazone set, I went with Thunderbolt, HP Ice, Toxic Rest, HP Ice to hit Salamence and Flygon. Toxic, general status move, and Rest, because we have an Aromatherapy Wheezing. You could also run Protect here, it's just as good, but Rest, I think makes sense with the Aroma Wheezing, and Aroma Wheezing also supports the Curse Rest Snorlax. All these guys all love Weather Clear, these guys love Golem Alola, just defeating things. And even though we don't trap and eliminate Tar, I think that we can still function against Tar well enough. Even if you don't guaranteed weather clear. If you weather clear once, go to, to Bugs Bunny's birthday blowout. Bulk up a couple times. Even if with sand up, as long as you get the bulks ups in, Tar is forced in to make sand and then there's not enough time to stop the threat. So it ends up working out, I think. You don't necessarily need Doug and a Sunflora squad. So there's the team. Hope you like it, DK Koba. Hope you enjoyed the, the process. You had the right idea from the beginning with the Magnazone. Plus Scrafty as a defensive core. We do need the flying resist. 
I was all over the place a little bit with the team, but we arrived at something that I think is pretty good. I'm sure there's little tweaks can be made. I think Golem Alola is the superior magnet puller in general and on this team with the compression of spin and magnet pull in one slot. Yeah, I think I'm happy with this squad. We've got the tournament coming up. I'll probably do commentary for that on the other channel. I'm competing in it myself as well. So stay tuned for that. More Hoenn Garden gaming to come. And if you want to suggest a team uh, for Team Doctor, I am at your whim. I will build a team in whatever format you suggest. Almost any ability, balanced hackmons, uh, I don't know, monotype, Gen 3, NU. You name it, I'll do it. Even if uh, there's, there's some formats I like experience in, I can't guarantee results in everything, but I'll try my damnedest. I'll try my best. And that's all I can do as a human being. Thank you for watching, everybody. And I'll catch you later. Thank you to the patrons. If you'd like to send me a team to look at in a video, or request a video topic for me to cover, take a look at my Patreon link in the description for more information. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for more informative content about competitive Pokemon. The money got different. Cause of what I'm spending. The money got different. Oh, it's Magneton! Cause of what I'm spending. The KO by one hit. It's scattered spikes. The money got different.